everyone. Um, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as we continue here on the, the Basketball Soapbox. Um, moving on to Kevin Durant, frustration in Phoenix. Um, Boge came out on Christmas Day basically alluding to uh, the frustrations that Kevin Durant allegedly has with the Phoenix Suns in just terms of not everything going right. Uh, the moves that they've been able to make, especially in the the, the minimum deal market, uh, the Grayson Adams, the Utah Wananabis, all those guys that haven't really panned out, uh, even though Grayson Allen's really shooting the ball. I just want to talk about additions that the Suns made. Um, and especially with the Bradley Beal injury, um, he's been out. He just recently came back. Um, but Kevin Durant's frustration in Phoenix, I kind of understand it, but I don't on the back end because when he came there, now I understand the Kevin Durant trade. It's Kevin Durant, top 15 player all time. One of the best scorers ever in the league, ever. At the small forward position, probably the best scorer, um, not total-wise, but in terms of efficiency, uh, being able to score from everywhere on the floor. And Kevin Durant's doing that this season. <laughs> Nearly 30 points per game, six assists a game, getting the playmaking uh, the past couple of games, uh, 6.3 rebounds, 50, 40, nearly 90 splits, nearly 50-50. 90 splits <laughs> at what, 34, 35 years old uh, for Kevin Durant. And he's just impressive. Automatically, first of all, a Hall of Famer. We know what he brings to the table. And I understand the Kevin Durant trade that you make that trade just because it's Kevin Durant, of course. And I was always hesitant because I was like, Booker got something with <laughs> Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson. I felt like they were building a nice rapport. And to see that just gone, that's one thing. You bring in Kevin Durant, okay. Then they moved DeAndre Aiden, who was a big man, had the issues with Monty Williams. I understand that, moving that. Then they make the trade for Bradley Beal, which people didn't like. And I'm like, okay, but it's like I feel like the trade for Aiden was the part that kind of hurt them more than making the Bradley Beal trade. Because now they have no interior defense. They have no big man. They have no way to grab rebounds. It's a lot more tougher on Kevin Durant. He has to be the front-line defense now. Um, I believe with Me Too and, and, and all that. And it's like, that's not what Kevin Durant wants to do at this stage of the game at his age, right? Like, that's not what you want your – that's not what you brought Kevin Durant here to play frontline defense. <laughs> it's been impressive. Of course, we saw that with the Golden State Warriors and stuff like that. But in terms of what that is, Yusuf Nurkic is, has been solid for the Phoenix Suns. has been a good positive addition there. Um, but in terms of defensively, no, nah, that's just not going to happen for him on that side of the ball. But to depend on Kevin Durant that much, having to make all these rotations, now he's having to play point guard. Him and Booker have been out. Um, it's tough, and it's tough, and I understand that. And Kevin Durant went back at Woj and said all these people are lying and deleted a tweet, basically denying the rumors that he's frustrated. And all these leaks come out and stuff like that. But it's like this is – this is – <laughs> this is Woj who said this. Like, right, like I, I'm pretty sure the information is not going to be false when it comes to Woj, right? Like Woj has a good track record, long track record of just being able to be an NBA insider for years. So I doubt that anything that Woj has said is incorrect. That's the first thing. But looking at what this Phoenix Suns team is at the point, this point, 16-15, ninth out in the Western Conference. Um, Bradley Beal has only played seven games. They're one and one with the big three all together. So that's frustrating. Nearly 31 games. And you've only played two games with your big three. That's tough. And especially in the Western Conference where Minnesota's taken off, Denver's taken off, OKC's taken off. Um, you're trying to see if uh, Sacramento can find their footing. Um, the Golden State Warriors are struggling, who I'll be also talking about at some point. But looking at the Western Conference here, as I pull it up, the Clippers are clicking, especially I think that they have had a weak schedule and now everything's they're going to be good, but they have had a weak schedule. And that's the one thing I've said that they've had, I believe, the fourth weakest schedule in the league the Clippers have. So we'll talk about them on another day. But they're pulling it together, especially with James Harden after those first abysmal, I believe, five games that they had with him. And then you got the Dallas Mavericks, of course, led by Luka Doncic. He's just going to guide them to wins with his play style. We'll see if whatever that happens in the playoffs. We'll see if Kyrie comes back. The Pelicans, who no one really trusts because it's just like you don't know what Zion's going to bring night to night. You don't know where this team is going to go, especially it's been so herky-jerky. Even though they're above 500, 
it's just tough right now to look at them. The Lakers, they're always a threat to make a move. Houston's playing really well out there. So there's a battle out in the Western Conference. That's that's 10 teams that I talked about that are out there in the Western Conference. And the Suns are ninth, they are eighth right now out of that. They are, yep, 16-15 still with the Lakers lost tonight. So to look at what the Phoenix Suns are doing, it's just like, can they get on the court? And you kind of look at that with the uh, – the Clippers, where they was just like, can these guys get on the court? Can they build some chemistry together? Playing two games with your big three. Of course, Bradley Beal came back after that back injury, his nagging back, and came back, and then all of a sudden just sprained his ankle randomly in the game off a jump shot. So that's really tough to continuously keep battling, pushing back and forth between these three guys, where you're depending on this guy to fill up the scoring, especially at the, at the guard position and be able to facilitate, create for the offense. Um, so that's tough to just put on all Kevin Durant and Devin Booker at this point. And all the guys have been injured at some point variation of this season. Um, so that's been tough. So to see Kevin Durant still out here, still trying to put on a show, <laughs> play point guard, uh, be frontline defense at this stage of his career at 35 years old, and still to be as efficient as he is, to still be as good as he is, he's got – him, LeBron Curry, of course, just playing fantastic into old age. But to put all that on Kevin Durant right now, and especially so early in the season, that's tough. So it's been tough for them to make moves because of just the salary cap restrictions that they can have. I don't even know if they can make a buyout move. But it's going to be hard to if they can trade anybody. I don't think they can. I don't think they have any assets. They traded all the picks. So looking at it from that standpoint, the Phoenix, this is it. They got to figure it out and – Hopefully it doesn't push Kevin Durant to the point where he, at worst case scenario injury and definitely don't want that with Kevin Durant, especially in the Western Conference. It's like this is probably the most talented top teams in the West. Like you're looking at how stacked it is and how much of a dogfight it is. So losing a guy, uh, even for a game, especially with Bradley Beal, who's missed what? Excuse me, 24 games on the season. That's tough. Like, and you're just hoping at some point that these guys can get it together now over the course of the season and try to put it together, man. Because Kevin Durant, he's playing fantastic. And if there is frustration, I understand it. But on the other side, it's like you guys kind of have to make this work, <laughs> especially with the jury, the trades that happen, all the assets given up, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, Chris Paul, um, Lammy Shamit, all these guys that were given up, <coughs> excuse me, in those trades. You have to find a way to make it work, and especially at this stage of your career. Of course, people are going to trade for Kevin Durant, but it's like how many assets are you going to give up to continue trading for Kevin Durant if it's going to end in frustration? So I'm going to think about